Yes, detective. Before you say anything, I, I, I didn't do it. Okay, I didn't do it. I wouldn't want to waste your time, and I wouldn't dare waste my time. It's been, it's been quite the night. I'm not, I'm not so much as excited for more surprises at this point. I'm lucky I even survived tonight after everything that's gone on. Yes, Detective, I understand you have to ask questions. I'm telling you from the beginning, I'm done. I'm an innocent man. The name is Reverend Green. I have no reason to murder these people. I don't know half of them. Especially Mrs. White. What an odd lady. Yes, Detective. Go along with your questioning. What do I remember of tonight? Um, well, I, I, I arrived, I arrived here around 6 p.m., I remember. I walked in along with the other people here, the other monsters. Well, not all of them are monsters, I just, I noticed very little things. See, I pick up on very small, subtle cues that people's actions can show. For instance, when I walked in, Mrs. White had the strangest look on her face, as if maybe, maybe it smelled bad in the, in the mansion. I, I, I couldn't smell anything, aside from the cooking, of course. Speaking of, uh, I would say around 6.30, we all head down to the dining table, and we all meet together. Everyone is there. No one's missing. Although Mrs. White did get up and, and use the restroom, I believe. Yes, she left for quite some time. Monkey brain soup was on the menu. Not necessarily something I would eat on my own, but popular in other cultures. That's beside the point. The cook made the food. All of us ate it, so it couldn't have been poisoned. I'd say maybe a little bit later we all we all met in another room. I don't quite remember where Mrs. White was. She did meet up with us later, but I kept remembering her disappearing detective. Yes, yes, Mrs. White. Colonel Mustard was there. Scarlet, of course, Mr. Body, and the others. Mr. Body introduced himself. He, he, all, he gave us gifts. Plenty, plenty of gifts for, for all of us. One per person, of course. They were strange, but uh, Mrs. White was given a rope. Yes. I found that to be strange. Everyone else was given uh, normal gifts. Uh, that I can remember. Uh, for instance, mine was just a simple little bottle of scotch. You see, Mr. Body and I were, we used to be good friends. What happened next was the lights shut off and I hear a loud bang. I, I, I could have sworn I heard someone gasping for air. Perhaps someone could have been strangled. Next thing I know, the lights come back on and Mr. Body is on the ground. Dead. I know because Professor Plum went up and, and checked his pulse. Professor Plum had distinguished he was long gone. Now, Detective, I will do my best to be of service. However, I'm, I am blinking. After uh, we we heard a loud scream coming from the kitchen, I remember. I wasn't sure if Mrs. White was with us. She could have been gone. She could have been perhaps plotting something. I'm not sure, but detective, I bring up Mrs. White several times because that is a strange character. I can assure you she... 
she wasn't the most mysterious out of us all. However, I remember all of us running to the kitchen after hearing that scream. I decided to be the man, the brave yet foolish man, walking into the kitchen and looking for the cook. None of us could find the cook. We were wondering maybe, since we haven't seen the cook since dinner, maybe she had something to do with this. However, our thoughts were squandered shortly after when I went over to the fridge looking for the cook and out falls a cold, dead, pale body. Yes, yes, detective, it, it was the cook, murdered in cold blood. No, I, I didn't do it. The body fell out on me and looking at such a pale, emotionless face with a knife in its back is is more than enough to put someone away from murder. I had never seen such a thing. Something so cold and demented. Sinister acts that can only be caused by someone with a grudge. Now that was the main thing, is why? Why were each one of us being brought off one by one Yes, detective. I do have my theories. However, I'm not sure I've been... Detective, do you think I may have murdered these people truthfully? In your heart of hearts, do you think I'd be capable? Do you think I'm being dishonest? A lead pipe. Where did you find that? The others can say whatever they want to say. My gift from Mr. Body was a bottle of scotch. I, I could prove it, but I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't know where that bottle is. Uh, I, I lost it. I wouldn't know where such a lead pipe would be. I am an innocent man, detective. I am a man that holds himself in high esteem. I didn't do it. I would have no reason to murder these people. Now, just between you and me, detective, as long as a word isn't getting out to the others, I do believe the husband of Mr. White, pardon me, Mrs. As deceiving as she may be, I believe her husband was having an affair with the maid. Yes, a beautiful woman. I'm not sure about the affair, but I did find out from proper law enforcement that the maid was found strangled. Isn't that odd? With rope marks across her neck. Now, Detective, isn't it a bit peculiar to you that the one person who could have a quarrel with the maid, the one person who got a rope as a gift, is not being looked at for the maid's death involving a rope? If someone is capable of murdering someone else, what makes you think that that murderer wouldn't strike again. That's what I was thinking. Now, detective, I wouldn't lie to law enforcement. Trust me, I know what it could take to be law enforcement. Honor, dignity, and above all, honesty. I don't owe these people anything. However, I do owe you nothing but the truth. This night has been more than rough. It's been absolutely confusing. Everyone pointing fingers here, there, everywhere. My finger all night since the day I walked in has been pointing at one person and one person only. Mrs. White. Yes, 
I can see she's in the other room. Perhaps trying to peek through a window or hear what we're talking about, detective. But what I can tell you is the absolute truth of what I have seen. Any further questions, detective? Well, yes, the others can say I was a bit frazzled, a bit spontaneous, and hey, maybe at some points acted like a maniac. But how would you have reacted? Bodies falling from the sky, people dropping left and right one by one in the same very house that you were in. Would you not be hysterical? Detective, I was fearing for my life just as much as the people who have lost theirs. And Mrs. White, I wouldn't say the same about her. She took it as a joke. And we all know we love jokes. So let me know how your interview with Mrs. White goes. I'd keep a hard eye on her, detective, and I can assume we're on the same page. Yes, I understand you need to remain professional. I'm not pointing any fingers yet, detective. Good luck on your search. If there's anything I can do to help further the process or make it easier on you, law enforcement, you let me know. If you don't mind, I'll be, I'll be in the library, perhaps trying to find that bottle of scotch. If, uh, if Mrs. White gets, uh, gets locked up, Will you rely a message to her from me? Just uh, let her know for that mugshot to don't forget to smile. Y yes, detective, I understand. No concrete evidence has been shown, therefore no concrete decisions have been made. I know you're a smart man. Reverend Green would do no wrong. Have a good night, detective. I'm sure you'd find more peculiar answers from the others. <laughs>